Hello, my name is Frank Curriero. I'm a professor in the Department of Epidemiology at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Along with my colleague, Tim Shields, we developed and currently direct the OPAL Online Spatial Analysis Program. Today, we're fortunate enough to speak with Ashley Young, who recently graduated from the Spatial Analysis Program. Ashley, welcome. It's nice to see you again. Thank you, Frank. It's good to be here, too. Maybe, you know, and, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about, about the program. Uh, maybe, but maybe first we can just start with um, a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, a little bit about your academic and professional background. Yes, of course. So I'm originally from Utah. I graduated from Brigham Young University with a bachelor's in public health in 2018. And I currently continue to live in Utah and I work for the Utah State Department of Health as an epidemiologist. I just was recently hired this year in August. And I graduated from the MAS program this year in May. So it's very exciting. Great. Congratulations on both the graduation and, and the landing of the new job. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, so let's start our conversation. Let's focus first on the time before enrolling in our program. So, you know, why did you start exploring graduate programs at this point of your, of your career? And why did you choose spatial analysis? Yeah, when I was looking for jobs after I had finished my bachelor's degree, I was living in Mississippi and it was difficult to find a public health position there in the state. I decided it would be better for me to get some skills that would niche down in the public health field to be able to kind of narrow down and figure out what I wanted to do. So as I was looking at different programs, Johns Hopkins was the program that interested me most, especially with the spatial analysis aspect. So because I had taken a few classes about spatial analysis in my undergrad, this was the program that I was most interested in. So I was grateful to be able to join the program and complete it. Great, great. And I'm sure you probably looked at several programs throughout the country, throughout the world. What attracted you to the Johns Hopkins program versus some of these other programs? Yes, definitely the prestige and the opportunities I would have with the professors and their knowledge. I also liked how the program was set up with being able to do it on my own time. It was asynchronous, so I would be able to watch videos uh, on my own because I was working at the time. So being able to use nights and weekends to do homework and be able to do those things, it's really set up for working professionals. And so having that balance was really important to me. And then also the emphasis on statistical analysis and getting that refresher for me was really important just because I had had that experience during my undergrad, but I wanted um, to even more strength in those skills to going ahead and trying to find a public health position. Yeah, no, that, that's great. You know, we emphasize in our program that um, we deal with the complete spatial, what we call the spatial science paradigm. So it includes spatial data and, and GIS. So everybody, all students learn the, the GIS, the ARC Pro software. Um, but we also have a component of spatial statistics to allow students to, to go beyond the map. And, and we teach the skills for students to actually analyze the maps, um, which is which is which is a distinguishing feature of our program, I think, compared to to other programs. Yes, um, definitely. Talk, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about your professional career now, um, and and how has this enhanced your career and 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 the skills you've learned and, and so forth. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So after while I was mid program, I was fortunate enough to find a job in Colorado working for my local county with COVID in 2021. And so that really helps me be able to get data for my final project and be able to kind of have that real life experience of pulling what I've learned and applying it to a specific real life problem. So that was wonderful. And then after that, um, our grants changed. And so I was let go. I moved to Utah, I was able to find this job. And the reason that I was employed and found this position that I'm currently in is because of the degree that I have in the experiences and the skills that I learned with ArcGIS, with R, with all the statistical analyses. Those were the reasons that they hired me for an analytical epidemiology position. So it, it was really the reason why I'm where I'm at now. So I'm very grateful. Yeah, no, that 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 sounds great. And um, we're so happy for you, you know, to to be able to find a program that that fits a lot of skills that you've learned. Um, the skills that that you learned, were they already being utilized to some degree at your current job or did you bring these as, as new skills to the workplace? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Currently, they are using, you know, Google Sheets instead of Excel and 
using a lot of R. I've actually built on my learning from R from the program by working with my colleagues and what they're teaching me, and learning more about how dashboards and R Markdown can use be used to have reports. So that's been really interesting, but they haven't utilized a lot of geographical and GIS skills. So I was able to introduce them to ArcGIS and kind of the wonderful program that it is to be able to kind of visualize the data that we have. And so that's been a good learning experience. Great. That, 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 that's great to hear. Um, speaking about the skills, you know, are there other skills or tools you feel you've gained from our program? And overall, how do you feel they've benefited um, your career, whether it's this current job or what you might see, you know, in further advancement at, at your current position? Yeah, I definitely think that this program helped a lot in introducing me to R and how to code and how to use it for mapping and also statistical analyses. We also learned, you know, with SatScan and ArcGIS and those kind of technical skills and how to use those programs. But more importantly, were the fundamentals, I think, of doing statistical analyses, do, reviewing epidemiological um, learning and reviewing you know, our GIS background as well, using all of those tools to kind of create this large package that of learning that has carried me through has been essential. Perfect. And I so and I just want to um, take a minute here just to explain some things to those who might be watching back at, at our conversation here. So GIS stands for geographic information system. There is plenty of software out there to do that. Probably the most popular surf software is made by the Esri, E-S-R-I company. It started out as ArcGIS. It is now Arc Pro. Um, and then um, R, which is, you've mentioned that a couple of times, is a statistical analysis program, a very powerful statistical analysis program that is completely free and open source to anybody. You don't have to be in, in, in a Hopkins program or not. That, that is just out there. And, um, and R has come a very long way and R can do a lot of GIS manipulations and, and mapping itself along with a host of other um, statistical analysis, whether it's spatial statistical analysis or, or just any statistical analysis in general. And um, as a student of our program, um, you get complete licensed access to the um, R Pro software. And then, like I said, the R software is, is completely free for that. So um, let's go on to have you evaluate the program. Now, I know I'm an instructor in the program, but if you can, and be completely honest, comment on, you know, the design of our program, the lecture quality, of course, the instructors, modes of, of presentation and interactions you might have had with any faculty and, and the teaching assistants as well. Yes, um, I loved how the program was set up. Like I said before, it's really aimed towards working professionals. And so it is easy to balance along while you're working with doing school again. It doesn't feel like an undergrad where you're having to be in classes mm -hmm. all day. Um, and so being able to find that balance and be able to watch the video recordings, the lectures on your own time was really important to me because I had just had a baby as well when I started the program. And so being a, a new mom working also starting a new program all at once was um, definitely a big juggle. And so having that asynchronous learning really helps me out. Being able to do readings, um, they also helped. We also did some group projects, which I loved. I really enjoyed um, working with my classmates. Um, they're very intelligent people. And so it was an honor to be able to learn from them and work from them, work with them. Um, were there opportunities for you, for you to interact with with other members and meet other members in your cohort um, and, and, and so forth? Yes, um, I never met anyone in person just because I'm all the way out here in Utah and you know the school's out in Maryland, but I did you know do video chats, we did do group projects and then there's also a part of the interface of when you're using your classes. Um, right. yeah, there's yes. something on the um, on what's called the Course Plus Learning System. There is a discussion forum yes. that is open for students um, to post questions. You know, each each course you go through has a discussion forum, and and as you know, you can post questions and comments. Other students are encouraged 
to weigh in on that. Faculties and teaching assistants also weigh in on those as well. Those yes, so those discussions were wonderful. And then it was always easy for me to be able to reach out to a TA or to a professor if I had any concerns or questions. And then also using that you know, discussion board for public questions was useful as well because I could go back and see what other students had asked and it would also address my questions more often than not. So it was really useful. I really like the layout of the program, especially because I'm a visual learner and then also being able to listen and take notes, being able to pause, kind of collect my thoughts, write it down and move forward. Um, and then also that convenience of having a video. So you're able to slow it down or speed it up depending on what your brain is going at at that point. So it was useful for me to be able to run it at two times speed and be able to go through and learn that way. So yeah, I, I loved how the program was set up. It was very useful for me. I, I, I know you mentioned that to me previously about watching it first time through at, at twice, twice the speed, which was some, something I, I didn't think students do, but um, it, it gives me a different perspective on, on, on recorded uh, lectures. Um, two points. You mentioned um, you mentioned you're already, you're all the way out there in Utah, and obviously you know Hopkins is is here in Baltimore, Maryland. You know, but this is an online program. We we have students from all over the world. You know, yes. and and the one the one challenge with that is time zones, right? Is uh, if we're going to do because we also have you know in addition to the discussion forum, we have um, we have live talks. Mm -hmm. You know, where we actually join a video like we're like we're doing now. And have a live talk where we either have a structured live talk and there there's part of that hour we have them for an hour where we go over different material um but a lot of times we just leave it open-ended for the students to come together with the faculty and and kind of see each other as best we can in person in real time and and just talk about the course how the course is going questions people have um and so forth so there's live talks there's the discussion forum we touched on the teaching assistants the tas they have weekly office hours and it's it's two to three hours a week, you know, um, so students really have access to support and help um, on different content when they. And um, I felt like the TAs were very knowledgeable. I used them most um, during the end of the program just because I needed a lot of help with my final project and they were always willing to help. The office hours were really helpful because they were able to walk through and kind of see what was going on with my code or other issues and um, attending those, even if you didn't have issues was useful as well, because you could see what others were needing help on. So yeah, I was really appreciated of that. Yeah, we, we, we try to make it a point to provide as much support for students as we can. So let's talk, what kind of advice would you give somebody? if they're considering the program? Yeah, I would definitely weigh your options. I do think that this is one of the best programs out there. I know I'm also biased though, because I went through it and I enjoyed it and had a really great experience. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think looking at what your personal needs are in a program and making that career focused. I think you need to look at what career you are wanting to pursue learning what skills that career focuses on and then finding a program that will give you those. So for me, I wanted to go into spatial analysis, niche down in public health and, you know, be an epidemiologist. And this program gave me those skills. Um, so I'm grateful for that. And I'm a kind of learner that is able to listen, watch those videos, be able to be organized enough to be able to set my schedule and keep up with homework and watching videos on your own time. Um, so I feel like if you're having a hard time listening, if you're not in person, I don't think that this would be a good program for you because it is an online program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think kind of knowing yourself and knowing what you're going towards is very important in figuring that out instead of just blindly going wherever you think you might need to go. I think having a plan is important and will get you where you need to go and kind of have those clear goals and clear path on how you're going to move forward. Okay, great. And and like you said, and like we've been mentioning, it, it's completely online, 100% online. You work full time, you know, yes. and and um, and you're a mom. Yes. And <laughs> there's probably a lot of other things going on. So how are you able to manage time-wise? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, with childcare, um, 
a hundred percent childcare really was essential and having someone to pass the baby to so I could <laughs> be able to have that time and then um a lot less sleep I guess and because I did a lot of my schoolwork in the evenings and on the right. weekends and being able to watch those lectures and stuff but it, it was an adjustment but I definitely feel like the program there's no miscellaneous or extra courses it's all essential for you to learn it's all going to help you um it didn't feel like you know in undergrad where you're required to take certain courses to be able to graduate because you need whatever area um or credits and so it was definitely compacted to be the most succinct and essential courses that you're going to need to have this degree to forward your career. So it didn't feel like a waste of time ever. Well, that, 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 that's certainly great to hear. You know, and as, as professors and directors of, of this program, you know, we have lives too. And we know sometimes, you know, life happens, you know. So um, a lot of times there are, um, there are due dates for assignments and projects and that stuff and that and so forth. But we've been very flexible over the years yes. with extensions because of people run into, like I said, just life happens with, with a lot of things. And um, so I just want to make sure that that those listening are aware of that as well. It, it's yes, it is Johns Hopkins. It is a very prestigious university and we will teach you at, at the highest level. Um, but for this online program, we also recognize that uh, people have full-time jobs, full-time families, and um, and everything else. So um, so this has been great, Ashley. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I, I want to give you one more minute to see, is there any parting comments you want to share with, um, with, um, the, with the audience? Yeah, I think my one last tip is that after you graduate, that these are skills that you learn, and you are definitely the person responsible for upkeeping those skills. So for me, you know, I had a period of time where I was looking for a job and then found this job and now using R and other programs. And so during that period of time, I wasn't practicing using R. And so now I'm having to go back to my notes, back to the videos and kind of use Google to figure things out. So it's definitely a lifelong learning process for some of these skills. So that's what I would definitely encourage is that you find something that you're passionate about and that will interest you. Um, even if the thing isn't that interesting, you're able to apply it. So maybe R isn't that interesting, but the fact that you can use R to do specific things that you're passionate about will drive you forward to continue to be a lifelong learner. And I think that's really important. Yeah, that that that's tremendous advice. And you know, er, all the material is supplied online. So I'm I'm sure you and, and other students in the program have downloaded all that material. Yes, right? yep, so I have, have all my folders, that, yes. <laughs> yeah, at your fingertips. Um, so th th this has been great. I want to um, share my screen here just to show um, where people can get other further information. You know, so um, Morgan Fredericks, who, who works for the Opal office, um, there's her email. You're welcome to contact her. Um, at the bottom of the screen there is the uh, website for the MAS and spatial analysis at Johns Hopkins, if you haven't already seen that. There are two QR codes here you can scan. So what we didn't touch on was that the program also has a two-year MAS, which stands for Masters of Applied Science in Spatial Analysis, or there's a one-year certificate program. Um, the only difference between these two programs, the two-year Masters or the one-year certificate, is that the two-year Masters has courses in biostatistics and epidemiology. If you haven't um, um, had that, that content yet, we would people would take the MAS in, in, in spatial analysis. And also the MAS has a, a capstone project we call the integrative activity, like a thesis thing that, that students work on. Um, we also have a one-year certificate, which just focuses on the spatial analysis classes, the GIS and the spatial statistics classes. The, Spatial classes are exactly the same between the two-year MAS and the one-year certificate, but a lot of times we have um, students coming in with MPH degrees, Masters of Public Health already, so they've had biostatistics, they had epidemiology, and they just want the spatial skill set, so they would focus on the one-year certificate. Um, we're more than happy to, to talk with prospective students on what might be the best track for them and any other questions about the program. Um, that information is, is listed here. So it's probably a good time now to maybe pause the uh, the recording so you could um, 
scan these QR codes or, or just jot down that link um, and, uh, and get some more information about that. So um, I'll just give it a minute here. So thank you again, Ashley, and, um, and I, we wish you all the best success, continued success, and, and please stay in touch with us. Thank you. Of course. Yes, I absolutely will. I was very excited to tell you that I had found my position because of the program. And we are more than excited to hear that as well. We hear from alumni all the time about uh, different updates on, on their career. So thank you again. Of course.